California. This is Ken Goes Live. We're back, everybody. We're back. I'm here. How are you? This is going to be fun. We've got Dave Taylor live in chat. Old hands on. Channel 19. That's another Dave. we got a lot of David's room around these parts, but that's okay. Uh, and uh, we are broadcasting live on Twitch. First, twitch.tv slash catnapsock. Uploaded later to the wonderful, wild, definitely not broken world of YouTube career. Galloway, uh, Galloway joining uh, right now, too, as well. Sammy Leon Mendoza. So many people jumping in. I, I, I can't even get the comments out. Uh, Ranger Donald's here. John's here. Special guest later in the show. Special guest coming on in here will be the wonderful Alden Diaz. In fact, I'm so proud. I even made a little uh, a card, a motion graphic for this. Watch, watch this. Watch this. I'll be fade out my music here. Uh, look at that. Oh, oh Alden's going to pop on in. It is going to be beautiful here. And uh, second, happy to be back. Happy to be back safe and uh, relatively healthy is what we believe, is what we hope. Of course, uh, a lot of things going on in the world right now. A lot of important things to plug into as always. But uh, uh, your health might be the most important thing of all to plug in. As I have a can of sugar and energy. Uh, natural sh- uh, peach mango sugars. That can't be too bad. It says V8 on it. It's got to be healthy. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, DC, the comedy trip, the trip out there with Mark Ellis. Um, uh, definitely not traces. Did I bring presents back for us? Trey, I brought, I'll tell you what I brought, a slideshow. Yeah, that's right. Pictures like I'm a 90 year old. We're going to share those. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, special guest, like I said, Alden Diaz. We're we're going to have a conversation here in a couple minutes. Uh, about how he lost himself, how he lost himself online. Literally, it's not literally couldn't find himself gone. But as always, we're going to go into the things here. All right, everybody, I had the uh, fortune, the, the absolute fortune to head on out to Washington, D.C. for the second time in my life. This time I stayed in D.C. proper. Last time I was on that Virginia border. I love Virginia. Nothing. I, I, in fact, we, we, you know, we may have gone to a mellow mushroom out in Herndon, Virginia. It was, uh, it was a good time. Mark Ellis brought me along. Mark, of course, headlining over at the Comedy Loft. Uh, we were there two years, two years ago which was a different time. I think we all can agree. The world was so young and innocent then. Oh, just on fire from every angle, and it was only going to get worse. But we were happy to go back and had a, a very great time, four nights. And it was getting colder. And as we were there, this little thing, you know, the uh, the, the little COVID variant, Omicron, Omicron, Optimus Prime, Thanos, all these pop culture nicknames. Uh, I'm not even making them. Other people are. Uh, but the variant. Capital T, capital V. Started to show up, and you got to be concerned. A lot of people I know, uh, even double shotted and boosted, still getting it. Uh, testing positive. Uh, I was just texting with uh, someone right now. Won't disclose in case they haven't really uh, put it out there to the world. And it's uh, it's happening, and and you got to be careful. We were concerned, masked up, try to keep our distance as best we could. But then you get you start telling jokes and you start hugging, uh, and you know, occasionally kissing. Uh, that was just me and Mark, and you, you have to worry. So we got out. Mark and I are healthy. I want to thank all of you who came on out to the comedy laugh and join us there. Uh, Captain Lobot calls it a uh, Sith Wayfinder. Um, any hecklers on this trip? No hecklers, no hecklers. Everyone was good. In fact, uh, the shows were sold out. And then because of what was going on probably in the world, in the city, specifically DC, the, the cases were rising. Our sold out shows became very small shows and intimate shows. Intimate shows are actually pretty fun. If you, if you approach it right. And, and, and Mark absolutely always pro- approaches it right. We had a great time. And I, I got to tell you, Saturday night show uh, was the sold out show. It was a little stiff, a little stiff. The other shows with less people we were able to just kind of uh, connect them uh uh, in a different way, I guess. But all all the all the shows are great. Saturday night was a really fun show. It was our biggest crowd, so we absolutely loved it. All right, much like an old person, because that's what I uh, am, right? I'm going to share uh, my uh, I'm going to share my uh, travel log slideshow. Here we go. So you guys, there we go. This is the first one. This is me um, flying out Los Angeles. People always say Los Angeles isn't pretty. Nuts to those people. Beautiful. If you look real close, you can see Mark Hamill's house. I think it's somewhere over there in Malibu. Uh, then uh, we went to it was so nice to go back to James K. Polk's house with um, a decent human being. 
uh, in in uh, the White House. It was uh, nice to be there. And uh, the area around the White House, a lot less quiet or a lot more quiet, I should say, uh, more quiet. Uh, the, when we were there in 2019, a lot of a uh, lot of people around it. Uh, it was hard to get to. Uh, they had uh, walls up and they were doing some uh, construction or something around. I don't know. I think they I think they made that up. Uh, then uh, it allowed for these two uh, jerk balls to get real close this time. Uh, and take some good folks, uh, take some good photos with some helps uh, of some good folks around there. Then we then we went to the comedy show. Look at look at that guy. Oh, man, I'm sitting on a stool spinning yarns. It was a great time. Oh, look at that hat. I'm going to ask Alden Diaz if he's jealous of my hat when he comes on the show here. He probably has one. Uh, then I did on, on Friday morning. I did the monument tour. This and this is and I got to tell you something. Um, I uh, it's easy. It's, I, I love I, let me start start here. I love the history of our country. But the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there's a lot of all of it. There's light and darkness all, in all of us. I think there's light and darkness in the history of our, our country. And uh, you have to – you can't destroy the past. You must build and learn from it and face a lot of it and make it stronger. And I think we still have a chance every day to do that. And I found myself unexpectedly moved out there by the monuments. Even though I'd been there in 2019, I hadn't really done this walking tour. So I got a cup of coffee. And that's – now look at this. That's how far that's, – that's where I started out. That's where I ended up. Man, aren't I a walker? Uh, went up here. Uh, finally, uh, went up, crawled up the stairs. I can confirm on the back of Lincoln's head, not any other face carved in looking back towards uh, Arlington. Uh, got to see the uh, I Have a Dream spot, Martin Luther King. Now, I took, I, I'll say this. I took a great photo of this that uh, looks out. And uh, it looks out onto back towards Washington, uh, the Washington Monument across the reflecting pond. I couldn't uh, shrink it down. Enough. My only complaint, uh, big complaint. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing here. Uh, you can, you, you can, this exact, exact spot that MLK spoke of and uh, spoke from in 63. If you're not looking for it, you step right on it, not just over it, on it. They need to put something around it. A little, I don't know, a flag step, something. Cause I think a lot of people missed seeing that when I was there. I, I had to like stake my claim around it. People thought, why is this guy take a picture of just a brick? Um, there, yeah, there you have it. Uh, then, uh, that's the constitutional pond there. So pretty. I got to do some reflecting. And then the next day I went out and, um, I did this walk cause I wanted to see, uh, how far those jackholes on January 6th, uh, walked from to try to take over the Capitol building. And I, I just watched four hours at the Capitol, the HBO Max doc. Highly recommend it if you want to just get angry. And uh, anger is not always the best thing, but sometimes it can be a motivator. Uh, so that was my trip. That was my slideshow. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. I, I you know, I, I took about 30 other <laughs> shots. You know, I had, I had fun. I was moved. The history, I went to the Vietnam Memorial. I didn't take photos there. Didn't want to be that guy. Um, and when I went to the Vietnam Memorial, now my uh, two uncles served. My father was in the Navy during the Vietnam War, but I uh, never saw that kind of action. He was out in Guam. Uh, fortunately, uh, my uncle Nick was in the Navy as well, but he he only got as close as the shores. But my uncle Jim was in the Army, and he actually was there, and he lost his high school uh, best friend next to him on the front lines. And um, it was, uh, I was expecting to be somewhat moved, uh, when I went to the Vietnam Memorial, but I was really moved because when I walked up, there's a group of Vietnam veterans and I loved because it's a wide variety of veterans, but there was a couple veterans that looked like what you want Vietnam vets to look like the big bushy Santa beards, a bandana, uh, and, uh, they probably rode in on a hog and it was, uh, I was, and they were putting wreaths out. It was part of a, 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 a kind of a thing they do every year. And that got me and I, I there I was crying. Walking through it, uh, did some reflecting, and uh, and and walked on. And then, um, you know, the rest of the time, Mark Ellis and I just we both uh, in our respective haunted hotel. Uh, we took uh, we both took long naps uh, and uh, did some comedy. It was a lot of fun. A lot of people checking in, like Tommy Terry Green out there in the UK. Lauren Romo, the Galactic Podcast. There, <laughs> it's where Leslie April sat in Parks and Rec. Yes, good. Oh, special shout out to we've got Charlie Ashby here. Uh, Charlie's a uh, uh, a friend of Alden and a, and a great uh, Star Wars pontificator himself out there. Great set tour for Night of the Museum, Night of the Museum too. Great stuff. Great stuff. So uh, that's the things on my mind. That's the Maddie Gunner TVS. Well, how's it going? It's going great. I had a great time out there. I actually really love Washington, D.C. I got to tell you, uh, I love New York City, but I'm starting to look at New York City as that kind of city that uh, is like Las Vegas. I, I don't, I don't want to live there. I just want to go get drunk 
and get wild there. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, that's kind of uh, where I am with New York. But D.C., uh, lovely, absolutely lovely. Uh, it was just getting cold when we flew out uh, Monday morning, 38 degrees. And thanks for those who watched the show live last week. Uh, where uh, I did it impromptu because uh, our flight was delayed. We were supposed to get there a day earlier. We didn't. So there you go. That's the things on my mind. Uh, just, uh, you know, my little fun trip to D.C. All right. Now uh, we are going to uh, take a quick break. Well, I'm not going to take a quick break. Uh, they made me do another review. Hawkeye, the show on Disney Plus, just had its finale. Um, they made me do a review of it. And if you're worried about spoilers, I wouldn't be worried about spoilers. Uh, after this, Alton Diaz here on Ken Goes Live. Uh, who put this here? Why is this here? Who, is there someone in the car again? I don't want to. I don't want to review it, man. I haven't even seen it yet. I like, can't. Can it? Can a guy? Just watch a show uh, casually and not have to review it for clicks. I'm going to do that for Boba Fett. I'm going to get all the clicks in the world for Boba Fett that I can, but not from Hawkeye. I just, I'm enjoying Hawkeye on my own. I, I can't review it. I didn't see it. All right. So here's a thumbnail. Ah, I didn't see it. Ooh. Uh, what do you, eh, eh. Just, I just want to go home. No one else can help me do thumbnails. And elements, I, I learned it on my own. I'm a self-sufficient boss bitch is what I am. Just want to go home and put on sweatpants. Now I'm an angry guy in a car on YouTube. God, and I like Kathleen Kennedy. I've been enjoying the series a lot. I think it's great. I think it's loosely inspired by the things I loved about the comic book. And it is uh, what it needs to be for a Marvel series. And Haley Steinfeld, is it Seinfeld or Steinfeld? What's the deal with Haley's name? <laughs> She's everything I, I wanted from uh, Kate Bishop after reading the comic. And by the way, y'all should read the comic. Definitely read the comic. Jeremy Renner as Clint Burton in this series reminds me of me after three failed YouTube jobs. Florence Pugh. More like Florence, yeah. Am I right, Internet? I don't I don't know why Private Pile showed up. I don't know. I don't know who Private Pile is. I'm a fan of his work, that's what I'll say. Sugar and water. <laughs> this finale that you now made me review, even though I didn't want to. Ten out of ten arrows. The exploding kind. Can a man just go home now? Ugh. Hey. My dentist is open. Whoa, hey! Turn indicator, asshole! Or not. Um, so uh, thanks for that. All right. Uh, without further ado, here, uh, we are going to get to my special guest. Um, we've known each other for a few years after he paid to meet me at a meet and greet. And uh, we've been lifelong close buddies since then. He has uh, got quite a story to tell. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, Alden uh, Diaz is here in the house. Alden, how are you? Oh, oh, I've got you muted. That was my fault. I muted. There we go. I muted you. It's I okay. Muted. You know, I, since that meet and greet, I've been trying to flip all of my signed Knapsack merchandise, and uh, no one's been buying. I tried to sell I'll... a couple beanies. A couple. I wasn't, <laughs> couple I wasn't wearing. I wasn't wearing the beanies in Chicago in 2019. I wish I was. That's when I should have started. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's but the unexpected snows of Chicago when it went full off on us. It did um, go. Full. Uh, yeah, uh, look at that. that's look true. At that. I mean, that's fair, and, and we'll get to that, Charlie. We will was, get to was, the, the muting. Was, was, Alden, was that was that where um, was that where we first met with Chicago 2019? Yeah, we met um, that weekend a couple times. I think on the floor. Uh, well, first at Four Center, 
at at the Alulu the live show, right? Yeah, the live show. Then we bumped into each other uh, at Schmodown and, and a couple other times. And it was funny because you get to track and for people that haven't been to Celebration. First yeah. of all, I mean, you, there's you can't encapsulate that in words, but no. you get to track you everybody's try. experience throughout the weekend. So right. the first time you see them, you get to see them anticipating something. Ooh, like all excited. Yeah. And then the next time I saw you, I was like, dude, the the flip Lando. Right. Like right. you start to actually get to talk about things. So you're on right. a little little ride with people. And then the last day, if you saw me on Monday, I was mm -hmm. day drunk wondering how I was going to get home. It's great. Time. Well, I had actually gone home Sunday night because I had to be live on the air Monday morning. And I had told my my Ooh. program director, oh yeah, I told my program director, I promise I'll come back because uh, I had they they were giving me stink for for going uh, because I was I was I was too new to be taking time off for fun is what the older radio guys were saying. <laughs> so I said I'll be back Monday, and then so I got back to Florida that night. Yeah, watched Game of Thrones because it premiered that night. Right, it did, and then just stayed up and went to work <laughs> because it was too late in the evening. Right. As you should. That was a great time. Yeah, we, me and Scrimshaw, Ellis, and then uh, Darina Ariana from the World Girls uh, watched the Game of Thrones season eight premiere in my bedroom. But I had made a rule in my hotel. I said, you all can come if you all yeah. don't even say a word, not a mm -hmm. word, not make a sound. Everyone abided by the rules except for Darina ate like a crunchy bowl of chips. Almost kicked her out. Almost kicked her out. Too far. Uh, Too far. So Alden Diaz of... Octo Radio, great Star yes. Wars podcast that I've uh, been on. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for taking time out of what was clearly a busy life to be here. But you've got a harrowing tale that we're going to talk about here. Of um, mm -hmm. you lost your Twitter handle, your your Twitter feed got taken away from you. We're gonna, you're going to fill in the details. I'm convinced it's because you put out too many tweet threads. But uh, you talk to me. How did this happen? Well, that's a that's a really good theory. The prevailing theory, if you're a friend of mine, that mm -hmm. seems to be the general consensus. Right. Um, some people have their theories that maybe it was uh, uh, people that may disagree with me on some popular uh, films with some laser okay. swords. Uh, yeah, that, that maybe there was uh, some some reporting and everything. But here's the mysterious part. So I'll set the stage. So I was on Seven. Twitter, yeah. was mid sending a tweet. And then all of a sudden, my phone tells me, oh, you're logged out. I was like, that's weird. Maybe an update. Okay. So I had it open on my laptop just and I checked. I was logged out there too. Yeah. Then every one of my passwords, and I'm one of, I have the same base password and then just a bunch of different versions of it. Okay. Okay. Because you can't change the core word. Yeah. What, just, yeah. What, what, let me guess it. Is it uh, Dua Lupa? Yeah. It's, how'd you know her name? It's, it's exactly it. Dua Lupa. Okay. Uh, no, I do not have a Dua Lipa based password, nor a Haley Steinfeld. Steinfeld, yeah. Uh, Haley Seinfeld would be a great bit, though. If she ever hosts SNL. Well, that's the deal. There, there's something there. Well, that's the deal. Yeah. I'm nominated and, for an Oscar. I want to point out, in the video, I said Clint Burton, and I know that, but I'm going to see how many people get angry at me to say it, because it's Barton. Anyway, sec second. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, okay, so your, your, your passwords are out. Yeah, it's so everything's not time. working. And but like, it's, not, is, it's not like your Apple iTunes uh, password or your Instagram or your LinkedIn's are gone. It's just Twitter. Just Twitter. And and I have a note in my phone that has the exact version. You know, if it's a capital mm -hmm. letter here, right. add an exclamation point, whatever. So I know what it is. It's not working on any device. I contact support. Support's like, well, we can help you. We have to use your email. But yeah. I've had this Twitter account for a decade. So I, that was my high school email that, you know, we would send each other notes on and, and projects. So it's like, I don't have the access to that anymore. So I contacted Yahoo because it was a Yahoo email. Yeah. Never thought I'd be talking about Yahoo anymore. Yeah, no. And Yahoo was like, oh, yeah, after a certain amount of years, we just deactivate these. Oh. So, I'm like, so where's it all going? They were like, the void. <laughs> well, that might explain why I can't get into my uh, MySpace page this, this past couple months. I know you want to release your, your new EP. Yeah. And find your music audience. Yeah, course, I, have a, that's where you go. I have a I have a Christmas EP coming out. <laughs> you don't want to you... Santa Claus is coming to town. No. Ooh, okay. I love it. I love that. Um yeah, but it's <laughs> it was just a big mystery and I, and then my my last line of thinking was, you know, oh see yeah, Facebook, that's yeah. gotta suck because you've got your family photos. Your whole life on there, yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. Get your life off there, kids. Yeah, uh, uh, 
that has been a big lesson. I'm going to start backing stuff up. But yeah, so then I decided, well, maybe I was hacked. So I asked mm-hmm. a few people, hey, can you just keep an eye on like your DMs if anything weird comes in from me? Let me ask you this question. Who'd you ask? Who's on your list of help? Charlie? Charlie? Is Charlie Ashby on that help? No, I wouldn't mention Charlie because Char- Char- Charlie would play mind games. Charlie would try. Really? To, Charlie would tell me that I was hacked just to mess with me. I don't know them. I don't know him that well. He's from the UK, right? Mm-hmm. Not to be Sh- trusted. Be a shifty, right? The shifty things uh, what they really did shifty. back in the day. So okay, but he's not All from right. England, like like you know Florence Pugh is from England. He's from England, like Peaky Blinders, like oh, kick your teeth in, like sh- like really unsavory he wears, characters. He wears a funny hat and mm-hmm. and uh, has a rugged sex appeal. That's yeah, cool. I'd say that rugged. Rugged's a word that I use. Just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. then I, but here, here was the revelation, Ken. Yeah. Here's the unexpected part of the story. For about two or three days, I was really frustrated about it. Mm. Some for, you know, just content reasons. And like, I say that and part of me wants to just like gag. Uh, sure. But you, you start to have those thoughts like, oh, man, I got to promote pods without it right now. Right. Things like that. Do? So that's a pain because we're in a rock and a hard place with this stuff. We hate yeah. it, but we need it. And then there was a little bit of the personal, like, oh, well, I had, like, you know, my friendships on there. But you can rebuild those. But yeah. then it was also just pride. Like, you don't yeah. get to choose when I leave. I'll choose yeah. when I leave. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, We all want to choose our own destiny. That's that's the mm-hmm. uh, that's the best thing here. Uh, and Vermont Mike's got a great question I, wa- I do want to revisit here. Um, mm-hmm. So this happens, and you 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 started a new Twitter handle now. And, th- yeah. and by the way, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to tell people what, why we're talking about this in the show. I want the people to, to know, and uh, you can tell everyone where to follow you. But you, you, I'll, I'll be, I'm going to be honest. Okay. You ready? You're going to be honest. I'm ready. You, you reached out and you said, Hey, cause you have my, you have my cell phone now, which if you ever sell that to any star Wars podcast, I'm hunting you down. Okay. Um, you text me and you said, um, hey, do you mind uh, tweeting out my new handle? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> You're nicer about it than that. Let the <laughs> listeners know. He was nicer. He did not a completely big time. He responded, who? Who are you? Like, what now? Stop sending me pictures of Florence Pugh. Uh, and no, uh, that's a joke. That's a joke, people. Um, no, I, yeah, I just was like, I don't, I don't put a lot out on my Twitter page. It isn't my own. I don't put a lot out on Twitter. And God forbid, and you are at times, I, I support everything you do. At times, you could be considered a controversial Twitter figure, right? You know, <laughs> I'm, a, like, I'm a Twitter iconoclast. An I, iconoclast. Like to, I, I like to challenge, but yeah, I, I like I'm to, not saying I'm that promote. in a bad way. I, clearly, like, you're on the show. We're pals. You, you're on Castle yeah. Talk. We love talking all the Star Wars and Game of Thrones with you. But, Absolutely. you know, but uh, you, but here's the thing this is my point. I trust you, but if I tweet out, Hey, everyone, my pal Alden got hacked or lost a tweet. Follow him here. Mm -hmm. And the next day you tweet out, hey, viva la January 6th. You know, (laughs) I don't know. I can't. Then that's people, you know, people don't know when I might snap. It's like, yeah, in my in my old job, we famously famously in the news, in the papers, uh, nearly arrested Girl Scouts for selling cookies on our property, because if we didn't. Uh, then uh, the like other groups that would come by that you don't want anywhere near you would have a legal right mm-hmm. to be there. Uh, it's just it's a weird game, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, President, uh, you know, Alden Diaz is a controversial character. That's all I'll say. Look, it's like if if all of a sudden I just went off the rails or you know said something super controversial, you know, your Girl Scout. Um, yeah. comparison that works you know i when i visited some of my friends here you're Florida, a girl scout. you're like a girl scout just I, I, I love a tag along by the way if anyone's if any parents are watching this i don't know when the season is find a way to hit me up i will order tag alongs from your family <laughs> uh, isn't it soon it's got to be soon i think I, it's the beginning of the year right I'm yeah sure it is. the fact that they don't do that at christmas miss business opportunity shocking right christmas. it's really interesting yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's like at the University of Florida, there's mm-hmm. a, a UF preacher that just tells all the girls are going to hell because yeah. like, I guess he's allowed to be there, even though yeah. he's never attended. Like, that's the precedent. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, I I'll, understand I'll t- that. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the rules. It's it's different probably state to state. States rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be a messy thing. It's, uh, it's a Supreme Court case called the Pruneyard decision, mm-hmm. which sets forth private properties open to the public have the right 
to name the time, place, and manner in which people are allowed on the property to speak about certain issues. Uh, so it means you have to allow and has to be a process to get people in there, but mm. the companies can determine the time, place, and manner. So I bet that guy yelling at the girls who are going to hell, Eddie's wrong about that, is probably uh, has to be within three feet of that. <laughs> probably, yeah. I think it's just like a certain zone. You always see counter protest, protest, counter protest. It just mm -hmm. goes on mm -hmm. and on. But um, so in this whole scenario and debacle, yeah, I, I felt a lot of anger because it's also, anger. you know, you, you don't want to you don't want to pat yourself on the back and be like, I'm so cool. I mean, I'm talking to Ken here. I mean, I, I'm in Ken's cell phone now along <laughs> along some big names, you know, like how else do we shill if not to get the, you know, to get the yeah. phone numbers of important Hold people. On. I'm hovering over the delete button now. <laughs> but. You know, I had like, you know, Pedro Pascal was following me and I, you know, yeah. I chatted with him a couple of times and just, you know, different people yeah. that I that I thought were cool in the space or, you know, people that would have loved to have had as guests or whatever. Now you got to restart. But then something dawned on me about a, two or three days into this. What's that? It was so much better. It was peaceful. You had peace being forced off of there. I feel like I had a revelation. Yeah. And it was like wow, like, this is what it's like to hit the mute button yeah. but for everyone. You, like, <laughs> you almost sound like Palpatine, and we shall have peace. peace. Yeah, the way, totally I, just, I just noticed this was, I, I have, uh, I don't know if people can see that there. Oh, mm. gosh, it's a little, uh, it's a, a phone number for a cabbie in Chicago that I got in a Star Wars celebration. You never know. You might need that. It was great. We talked about, he drove me to the airport, and halfway through the airport, he goes, we're driving along. And he does this. He looks back and goes, hey, hey. And I go, yeah, what's up, Alex? You believe in aliens? I was like, that's the best cab ride. Yes, I, yes. Hit me. Hit me with yeah, your story, man. Alex. Uh, he has uh, to come on the show. Great so guy. you so you found peace. And that's the lesson in this, Alden. Mm -hmm. uh, you faced adversity. You were faced mm -hmm. with anger. And you worked through all that to find peace. That's a life lesson for the holiday seasons, Alden. It is. It was like. The end of a wonderful life, but without any of the gravitas or any classic qualities, but in all color. So there was that. Uh, wow. And it was, yeah, I had these these revelations where, you know, being the group chats with some people, Charlie among them and, and, and saying like, oh, did uh, you see this terrible take? And I would say, you know what? No, I didn't. No. Like, no. that's incredible. And I and I felt good. <laughs> and then I good. threw it all away. <laughs> uh, and then you, you, well, look, it is, it is, it is for a business reason there. That, that's fair. Yeah. Enough. That's fair. Man. Uh, all right. Uh, you, we're going to, we're going to put this, this is i I'm going to come back to the story here, but I, I don't want to forget this question here. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to, honest question from Vermont Mike. Vermont Mike mm -hmm. is in my uh, age group, which means we really love all Oasis albums. Uh, he says, honest, honest, honest question to chap. Is there a best email service? Um, I am a, um, I am definitely a, a Gmail guy, but I wasn't always. In fact, I used to campaign against it uh, because I used to fight <laughs> change as opposed to find my place in change. Uh, and I was a Hotmail guy, which I still have an active Hotmail account. Uh, Alden, your preferred? Are you are you just Gmail like the rest of the world? Is that is that, is that just the Kleenex of uh, the of tissue? I think it is. I was Yahoo for a long time. Then I became yeah. Gmail, probably middle of high school. Stuck with it. Still the same one. But when we email each other, you have my business account mm. because of my job. Now, yes. it's because it's a company. They plaster the company name as the email address. But at its core, it's Outlook. And oh, boy, do I hate Outlook. I don't like Outlook. Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. Ranger Donald, I had my Yahoo mail for 20 years now. Uh, I had AOL. I, had, I did all of them. I just... Um, it's not to Vermont Mike's question, uh, and maybe Vermont's uh, Mike's feeling a little defensive uh, here. I get it. It's it's not that AOL.com email addresses weren't effective or Yahoo.com or Hotmail. I just I don't I don't want to be the person that uh, doesn't embrace techno technological changes and changes. Because yeah. I told you, if you still still wear. Uh, a cut of jeans that's a little 10 years out of style, it means you just haven't found the the the, the need to move forward in any way in life. So I think it, I think so it is with jeans, so it is with email. That is entirely true. And I've had a little bit of that as well, for as much as I can with like my age group, because yeah. we were so wrapped up in the tech, but yeah. I was a, I'll never get an iPhone guy all throughout high school. Right. And even into, that? you know, my first couple like jobs and working experiences, 
And then one day I plopped my phone into the toilet and I thought, this is a, this is a sign. Like I need to break. <laughs> yeah. I need to move on. And I've, I have enjoyed my iPhone. I've had the same one for like six ish. Yeah. Years. Like, look, yeah. I, I, we're, look, we're in a corporate world and who knows, you know, sometimes you, you want choice and we don't have it. I get that. That's not the thing. And not every, not every new thing is the better thing. I totally agree uh, with that as well. But uh, you know, that's my thing. I'm going to get off the soapbox of email. Uh, and yeah. Mike uh, asked Jeeves, did ask Jeeves have an email? I don't know. Did anyone have an ask Jeeves email? That'd be, uh, that'd be the great. worst thing that ever happened to the internet was the firing of Jeeves. That's true. Uh, John says, I use all three services for over 20 years. And that's not a bad thing, too, to have them all. That's why I still got my Hotmail. If you need to reach me on Hotmail, occasionally uh, people try. Um, and Aaron, the author, says, I have a main Yahoo.ca account because she's up there in Canada. Um, but also a Hotmail account, a couple Gmail accounts, and one attached to my website. Aaron gets around. Look at that. Wow. You have a network that's just all you. Every person on your network is you. Yeah, that's great. Um, Alden, uh, this is uh, you're going to stick around here for a bit. Uh, the Ken goes live is just a fun check in show, uh, you know, but I, I think you've come in here and checked in and given us a pretty amazing life lesson here. Um, are you going to if 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 we're allowed to go, it's the, are you going to go to uh, Celebration Anaheim? Yes. Celebration Anaheim is in the cards. We hope, you know, and I was just talking yeah. to a, a couple people today um, yeah. about this very topic of. What's it going to look like? Yeah. What's it going to look like? How many fist fights are going to happen there between podcasters? And um, let me, are, are you, is the, is the Charlie coming out from the UK? I'd like to meet Charlie in person one day. Seems Charlie like is coming out from the UK. Sometimes he likes to say that he's not, but he can't resist what? it. It's like a siren's call. He's yeah. going to be there. Where do you think, it, let's just assume he's going to be there. And one day we'll get him on the program. Hmm. What do you, you've been to Anaheim before, right? No, I've never been to California. Never been to California. Yeah, wow. at all. Okay. What What in your wildest, where, what do you think, other than the convention, that you're going to be doing in that area? Do you have any chain restaurants picked out that you want to go to? I do. Well, I don't know if it's a chain. You'll have to tell me. But when we were looking at the hotel block, I made mm -hmm. a joke and I zoomed. Uh, like If you're looking at it from the bird's eye view of the convention center to yep. the right, I don't know what north south east west end it is of the convention but to the right on the map there mm -hmm. uh you've got in the digital map i turned it and then i zoomed all the way in and right, right. there is roscoe's chicken and waffles mm. and i became okay. obsessed with the idea of going yeah. there so i'm gonna have to get my five piece tender and a belgian waffle before i get in line for it's taika <laughs> yeah okay i didn't know there was one down there now okay yeah i'll have to check on that uh, depending on, maybe it's an off-air conversation, but depending on where you go, sometimes you might not be experiencing the same restaurant as uh, other people. It's an interesting thing. It's an interesting thing. We'll talk. There's like a whole mythology and, mm -hmm. and lore to this street. <laughs> to I'm not, uh, I, if I go in, I'm not getting the same menu, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Oof. Oof. It, and guess, like what? guess what? Guess what? I understand. <laughs> <laughs> i get it you're like this is not a moral judgment it's just a fact nope nope i will take what i'm given <laughs> oh that's fantastic given. uh dylan uh barry says uh, what about doghouse uh i don't think there's a doghouse in anaheim uh there might be i don't know close all right uh but here, here's the thing if we're down there if we all get to go out there um you gotta promise me that you uh and alex and molly and and uh, charlie uh uh, the, you know, it'll be a select guest list. I'll be, I'll be honest. The guest list will be cold. Um, we got to head out to my favorite spot, the bubble gum shrimp uh, company. Oh, 100%. I would love, to, I love bubble gum. We had one probably like the half hour away from where I mostly grew up. And mm -hmm. that was a place that my mother and I used to love to hit up. And, yeah. you know, sometimes she would go shopping because it was in a big outdoor shopping sort of mall here in, uh, yeah. in Miami called Bayside. And I would tell her, I'm like, can we just go to the Forest Gump place, please? Like, that's <laughs> when we're done, please. It's true. True. And uh, you said Bayside. Nick from Bayside is going to be out there celebration as mm. well. Too. See, I'll see if he wants to do some shrimp. Um, all right. Uh, Alden, uh, do you want to stick around with me here? Please say yes as I answer some questions. And you can maybe help me with some of these uh, questions, too. Absolutely. Please. Okay, we got, yeah, our first question here is actually going to be a video question from our friend, the very lovely uh, it is, uh, it, it, he's, uh, he's sitting in his home studio now. It's old handsaw. Well, 
I like to watch the fake fish. So, uh, hey, old handsaw here. Uh, happy holidays and soon to be Christmas, Ken, and everyone else. Um, just kind of uh, wondering, it's the uh, season of bad sweaters and bad music. And I was just wondering, is there any Christmas songs that you find cringeworthy? You know, something that you would want to grab your radio and just take a hammer and just start smashing it. Yeah, uh, for me, it's probably Little Drummer Boy. I never had any use for it. I uh, never heard a version I liked. And it's, you know, who likes drum solos? So uh, just kind of curious to what some of your picks are. Um, I really, like I said, just wish everybody a happy and safe Christmas. I hope you can spend it with your families uh, in person or at least, you know, online where it's safe. And I've got some uh, pressing work that I need to get done. And I think the fish will like this. They're fake fish. So uh, just Merry Christmas, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye. There you have the wonderful old hands on mm. uh, for those that are uh, celebrating this week. Happy holidays. Alden, this is uh, an interesting question. It's, it's about Christmas music and our mm. least favorite Christmas songs. I'll start here. Uh, it's hard for me to pick one. I don't love all Christmas music. I just don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I don't think that I have an inherent problem with it either. I, I thought the question was going to go to best and I have a best answer. But worst, mm. it's like you really need to start thinking. You know, like, yeah. is there one that really just like makes me want to go, oh, change the channel immediately? He said, what he said, uh, he said, uh, little, uh, little drummer boy, right? Or, or, or little drummer boy. Yeah. Is that what right. he said? Is that, was, was that his answer? I'm trying to, yeah. I'm, I'm looking down, I'm trying to get some lyrics right now. Uh, I kind of, uh, I actually kind of like that one. Is that, which is the one that David Bowie and like Bing Crosby did? Was that, oh, oh, oh. they told me, is that little, that's I think little, that, that is little drummer boy. I, I don't mind that one. Yeah. I don't mind that one. Um, I don't know if Bowie has any other ones. Charlie is, is a Bowie fanatic. He can tell us which ones he's done. Um, Little Drummer Jack. Boys, Channel 19. Yeah, everyone's. Yeah, I love. I mean, yeah, I'm a big Bowie fan too. Um, I saw him uh, in uh, 0405 range down, down in Anaheim. I uh, love him. Um, yeah, but um, oh, yeah, that's right. Old Hands sounds right. They, they do a mix, they do like a club mm. mix into Peace on Earth. I love that. A club mix into yeah. Peace on Earth. That's a great yeah. sentence. Um, I, I think my worst, I, I think I go Rudolph and I, Ooh, I okay. think it's because I've grown up in the generation of like, let's apply the morality play to the narrative and like how they're like, oh, Rudolph, we're going to yeah. be nice to you now that we need you. And it's like, yeah, but, here, but here's, here's the thing. I, I agree with uh, your quote unquote, your generation uh, analyzing that. I, I actually agree with it. I think that's kind of where we are. We need to look at it because we all, but also it, it's a harsh life lesson that I don't know it's going to change yet. You can try to change it and you should try to change it. Maybe your generation will be the generation to retell the Rudolph story. But I also think it's a little bit of uh, Hey, ain't no one wanted my phone number till I got on a star Wars podcast. They watched, you know, that's just life. Yeah. And that's they don't tell life. you what it was like when Rudolph and them landed that night. Like maybe he had a great life after that. So that's true. Yeah, maybe That was his yeah. moment. Here's a sentence I would never thought I'd say on any show ever in my life. Uh, Bob, we get it. Bob Seger, little drummer boy rules. I mean, <laughs> David Taylor, more power to you. More power to you. Charlie says not a big fan of Stop the Cover. See, I, I, I just like um, uh, <laughs> Captain Lobot with one of my favorite lines from a Christmas song from Bono. Uh, well, tonight, thank God it's them instead of you. Cause there won't be snow in Africa this Christmas time. Oh, I actually, actually, I'll tell you what, I'm a big fan of eighties, like combo charity songs. I was like, about to say, like, yeah, like let's all pick a cause and stuff. Everybody. Into the recording booth. Like, <laughs> when you're feeling, um, Pete Rich says, I like the one about Blonde Jesus. Pete Rich, I got to shout out Pete Rich here for a second, Alden, and then we'll keep some Christmas conversations going. Mm. Pete Rich came out uh, with uh, his special lady friend, uh, Amanda, I believe. Gosh, uh, met a lot of names, met, met a lot of people, uh, learned a lot of names this weekend. Uh, Pete came out to our great Saturday night show there, and 
we, Pete was calling in last week to last week's show, and he's got some long hair and he's got some beard, and people were like, "It's white Jesus," um, and it was we were having an inside joke. One of the other comics who had not, trust me, not a lot of people watching Ken Goes Live in, uh, you know, D.C., he didn't see it. And he called Pete. He goes, oh, look, you're, you're kind of like white Jesus. And the next comic, Ilani, she said, yeah, you're kind of like white Jesus. And I just kind of went with it, pretending like I had not said that before. Uh, and then Mark did it as well. Pete Rich walked around D.C. like white Jesus. And I think he's I think it I think it chuffed him up. I think he feels real good about that, especially now it's seasonal. I mean, you're approaching the, you know, the supposed birthday of what. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, what, that's what Pete was doing. He was out celebrating his his, his own birthday. birthday. Yeah. Uh, the Beach Boys, Little St. Nick. I love it. Hate it. I love it. Yeah, that's exciting. I love like I love U2's version of uh, uh, Baby, Please Come Home. Right. They, they do that one there. Um, I even like the Love Actually version of mm. All I Want for Christmas is You. I got no problem with that. And I one of my, my favorite Christmas song is 2000 Miles by the Pretenders, uh, oh. which is in a classic uh, like Christmas uh, standard. But I used to love I used to love playing that at the old radio station. And I, I'm not doing I'm not doing a Christmas uh, pop rock and radio mix this year. I uh, just ran out of time. But uh, that could end up on a future one there as well. All right. That's a great way to. Oh, Mojo Nixon. Trim yo tree is pretty awesome. Not safe for work. I don't think <laughs> many songs from Mojo Nixon, old hands off, are safe for work. So uh, that was a great way to start our questions here. Old hands off. And. To submit a video question, you have to be a uh, top-tier Patreon supporter over at patreon.com slash Ken uh, Other than that, you can submit uh, via Discord or Patreon uh, just at any level. Like, we've got some questions here. Uh, we've got this one here from uh, Kyle. Kyle, I met in, uh, uh, out there as well in D.C. So what's your favorite memorial scene in D.C.? I love the FRD memorial. Now, I think he may have done a, a typo and uh, meant the FDR one. But uh, I am also typing in uh, that you know, there's no FRD one. Um, so there you go. I, I let that type away. I, di I didn't want to assume. You know what I mean, Alden? I didn't want to assume. Maybe there was. Maybe that is his favorite uh, memorial, and it's in the back of a mellow mushroom in Herndon. I don't know. <laughs> the mellow mushroom. <laughs> oh yeah, mellow mushroom's great. Oh look at this. See, uh, see, I knew I, I knew I liked this Charlie Blow because this was Chrissy Hine that taught me that two thousand miles is very far away. It is. That song, <laughs> there. It, it is, it is, it's very far away. All right. Uh, so he, uh, Kyle, what is your favorite moral scene in DC? I, uh, I gotta say that I really loved, man, I, I think the Vietnam Memorial one, it, it, it struck me in a way I just I expected, but didn't expect. It's simple and um, sad and in and, and its beauty, uh, but poignant and purposeful. The other ones are great. I, I, I again, I love the history. Uh, and these people and these these presidents and these and these figures can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Discussions to have another time. Um, so that's that's kind of an interesting thing. I think a lot of people are just there to see it and not to reflect on what they're actually watching. But I like that yeah. one. And then, um, but there's cool. But I like the things like it's not even memorial. But uh, we are heading out to uh, to Herndon to to go. We're not lying to go to this mellow mushroom. And I we passed this place and just this weird old house. And it said the octagon. I looked at and it was it was James Madison, the fourth president of the United States. Oh, it was wow. like his house. It was his house. And I thought that was pretty cool. You know, that is really neat. We're we're a young country still. And you still got a house of a former president from uh, uh, the early 1800s there. So, uh, Alden, have you been to D.C.? Chance to visit all that stuff? Yeah, I've seen a good amount. Not nearly as much as I would like to. I think that my favorite, I really enjoyed the just the feel of the of the Eisenhower Memorial. But yeah. then there are some small, like, specific ones. Well, actually, the, the Japanese American Memorial, too, as well. But there are some specific singular person ones, like Joan of Arc. Right. Um, but then there's also I remember the first time I realized that there was a, a John Paul Jones memorial. I was like, I know it's not John Paul Jones the the bassist, but I really want it to be. <laughs> that would be great if it like in the middle of DC. He's not even dead and he gets a memorial. Well, yeah, it was a statue of like Bob Seeger just there. Dave Taylor's yeah. out there taking selfies. That'd be great. Just cause I mean there's uh, the Rocky statue and Stallone's still kicking and doing, I mean, doing well. And hey, you know what? They need a there's the Yoda statue up at Lucasfilm, but they just need like a random Luke Skywalker statue somewhere up over there. That's true. Uh, I mean there's a there's Kirk statues in Iowa where he's supposed to be from. That's true. That's I love that. Like same with Rocky. These are fictional characters, but let's just pretend that they uh, were real. And they, I, I'm okay with that. I think it's weird. All right. Question from Will McLean. What's your stance or uh, on on in home Christmas trees? Fake, real, either, or no tree at all? 
Uh, I will go first here, Alden, because uh, it's my show. <laughs> I'm a jerk. Uh, and more importantly, no trees. I don't. I like Christmas. It it might be my favorite holiday season. Hmm. Um, I don't. I just grew up with like my mom. We put up the tree like two three weeks before, and then the Christmas morning she was taking down decorations. So I just didn't grow up with the tree experience that uh, stuck with me. I am similar. I th- the trajectory of the trees in our home was downward, downward, severely downward. We're like we used to have some nice full real ones as a child. I think the last one that I had before I had initially moved out was like a glass, like mosaic looking tree just hanging out. And it was like a foot tall. Yeah. I I'm completely indifferent to them. I remember when I was working for a rock station, my yeah. first radio job, they said, Alden, go get it, go get a tree and bring it back by the, the 8 AM hour. We want to do a post about our tree or whatever. Right. And I went and I got a, a black fake tree. They were like, why is it black? I'm like, cause this is a rock station. It's a rock station. You want a goth rock uh, tree there. That's great. All right. Definitely. Trey uh, has this impromptu question. How did the hotel lobby rate in your experience? Um, the hotel lobby was not looking good because we st- Mark and I stayed in a hotel. that was built in like 1890 wow. and it was not like there wasn't lobby water, a gym, like any, it was, but you checked in elevators and then to the other side were these like old kind of couch chair kind of combos. And you sat there in the heat and we actually ended up sitting there. Uh, John Mariano, who was out, we actually sat in that lobby. And uh, I'll bring John on uh, to confirm that it was actually a pretty good experience. Not the one I was expecting. See, change. Open up yourself to change. All right, um, cut. we got we got a lot of questions, so we're gonna we're gonna get uh, get through this uh, here. Uh, let me uh, remove that one there, and then we got this question here from uh, Ball Drop McGee. What was your experience with Santa growing up? Santa baby, um, I. <laughs> I Alden, uh, when did you uh, find out about Santa? What was your Santa experience? I it's funny. I I think that maybe minimal effort was put in at a time, but I don't have memories of belief. I think it was right. in the same way that I knew that movies were a job that could be done, and like that's why a lot of stuff didn't scare me because I knew it was yeah. like this is a thing. It's like a play, you know. I I think that I understood very quickly that Santa was part of the tradition and not like a mythical being. Okay. I love that. Okay. Yeah. I was told very early on by my parents, uh, there's no Santa. It's white Jesus doing it. And Jesus. there we go. So I, um, in fact, I wasn't a snotty, I wasn't a snotty little kid. I wasn't like a Brad or bully on the playground. I was usually the one getting bullied on the playground, but for some reason, I just was the one who was telling all my friends when they were like, I hope Santa brings me the G.I. Joe uh, Mobat tank. I was like, nah, Santa ain't real. Good luck with that. Like, Oh, no. Ken. <laughs> Ken. Th- those kids out there, they're still recovering now. Yeah, they're still, yeah. They're like, um, uh, what? Ha-? And they're probably like, what happened to Ken? And then they Google me and they're like, yeah, I'm probably better <laughs> off. Um, all right. Uh, Lord Romo, who's in chat, says, with Spider-Man, No Way Homes, impressive box office numbers, do you think theaters can survive another season of being in a pandemic? Also, what is one of your favorite opening night movie experiences? Uh, Lauren of the Galactic Podcast and the Geek Broadcast. Great question. Uh, I've not had a chance to see, see No Way Home. No spoilers here. I'm going to try to see it eventually. Um, uh, so this is this is like a three a 13-part question, Alden. Number one, everyone vaccinate and boost up so we can help get through this thing faster. Wear your damn masks, all those kind of things. If you go to a theater, hey, you know, be safe if you can. I understand. We all started to get back. We felt we could get back. And, hey, this is we're we're adjusting. We're adjusting. It's it's calling audibles at the London scrimmage. Um, I think the theater going experience will always exist, Alden. It will always exist. It's just going to look different, pandemic or not. With blockbusters, corporations, all those uh, trying to make release dates, big franchises, temple filmmaking, it's entirely different now. I completely agree. Yeah, the, the question, again, it's like a, a wording technicality. Will the theater experience survive? Yes. Will, you know, local, you know, family-owned cinemas or non-chains survive? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly not. Um, you know, you got things like the Cinerama Dome. Right. It's coming back. I saw that report. So they're saving that one. Quentin just bought another theater. Uh, that's going to be, you know, different from the Beverly 
a different format. Yeah, and the, the new the new Bev finally went to, all these years. Finally went to the new Bev to see Excalibur. Great experience. Thank you, oh, Keith. Saw Excalibur at the new yeah. Beverly. That's Thank cool. You, yeah, on like yeah. an on like an original. Like it was on a, a film that he owns. Yeah, but, yeah, and it was it was poor quality, but it was like that was part of the experience. Anyways, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I, so and look, I, I want that, yeah. these indies. I want these indie theaters. I, want, I grew up at a, a Royal Grande, California. There was a, a Fair Oaks Theater, which is still there, and it's that's where I saw Return of the Jedi for the second time. That's where. Um, uh, where I saw Young Guns 2 for the first time. Mm. Uh, I, I, it's still there, and it's a beautiful experience. Uh, it's just harder, and I, I, I want to find a way to support it all because I also mm. love the experience of big films. I want to go see a Star Wars film in the theater. I, I, I w- wished I, I could have gone to see some of these Marvel films in theaters recently because um, it's a fun communal experience. Uh, it can get annoying at times. I wish mm. some people would shut up. Not you, Alden. But, uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I agree. I completely agree. And I think that it'll be interesting to see what the play is, you know, early in the pandemic, you know, Nolan was the first plays. one. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Sorry. <laughs> Nolan said, you know, screw it. You know, I'm putting tenant in it didn't work. Um, but then we started to see like a little experimentation with nostalgia. Like what if we yeah. threw in, you know, Jurassic park for a week? Like, I think we'll see a lot more of that to pay the right. bills. Like, okay, yes. maybe they won't leave their house for, uh you know the next unknown superhero but maybe they'll go if we said you know like fellowship of the ring 20 right now yeah. i'm surprised there's not way more fellowship screenings happening uh, um it's it maybe different times indeed yeah, yeah. old hand sauce says bring back drive-ins yes that's where i saw a new hope for the first time i was one i don't remember it i was in the back of a volkswagen van but i think we could do that and technology will only be better now back in the day we had to take a speaker box hang it on like your rear view mirror you could kind of hear the movie I think it could be better enough. Tune in your radio or an app. It'd be a good experience. Yeah, I actually just got a Spider-Man review from a drive-in. Uh, my co-host and collaborator, Tori Fox, mm-hmm. said, I really want to see this. I don't really want to go to a theater. And she found the drive-in and said she had a great time. And that great. And it worked out with everything that they have now. Great experience. Uh, the best drive-in vehicle would be a Subaru Brat. Back it in. You got them open. You got the, the seats in the back. Old Hansaw knows what I'm talking about. That's that's what we've got. He's <laughs> a super brother. Uh, Lauren's final question: Best opening night experience. I'm going to throw out some of the press related experiences I've 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 had with uh, my days at the old uh, the old companies. Uh, those those are unique, and 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 I was fortunate enough to experience them. But it just doesn't seem right to say oh, this premiere. Um, uh, but opening night, um, uh, opening day, Phantom Menace was great. Opening night, night Revenge of the Sith was great for me but um i think uh the one that stands out to me that's like an adult memory might be i don't know man might be it really might be revenge of the sith uh cinerama dome um mm. get to go uh, out to arclight back when the arclight don't it was a great experience hollywood friends uh assigned seating Whew. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Whether or not, you know, and I had, I had my feelings the prequels have grown and changed and matured since then. But even then, I really enjoyed it and uh, and just enjoyed the experience. It was, just, it was one of the only times I had a bunch of friends and I went out and said, hey, let's go do this. That's a great experience and a great theater to see it at, too. Um, I'm thinking about, I mean, it's hard to not just blurt out uh, Force Awakens, you know, because right, it's right. like. It, it, you cannot capture all of those elements. You know, it was more than lightning in a bottle. It was lightning, fire, wind. Like it was all of these yeah. things. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, the first Avengers because that was sort of the statement of we did it. Like the, the oh. gamble paid off. Oh yeah. You know what? I, I'll share with you. Sorry, I cut. I cut you off because no, that's... yeah, my my name's on the show. Um, <laughs> I I did go to an opening night Cinerama Dome for Captain America Winter Soldier that wasn't press related. Mm. And you see these a lot uh, when people go some of the, the Hollywood uh, theater locations back in the day and hopefully in the future. Uh, we were there with some good friends, Matt Key, uh, the late great granny Mahara, uh, Kim Horcher. Mm. We were, they're all there. And um, out came uh, like part of the cast, the Russos uh, as well. And, and they all came out and they kind of introduced the film. Totally unexpected. And you're cheering, you're hooting and hollering. And again, not part of press. We just we bought some tickets and we're there. And that that's always fun. That gets you geeked up. Uh, I wish maybe maybe an indie film could be that. You know, it's Sarah's Lament. Hello, I'm the director of Sarah's Lament. Like, that'd be OK. Maybe that would work. I don't yeah. Know. Or, or alternatively, an indie film. Imagine watching Indy 5 and Harrison walks out and he's like, I did another one. Here it is. <laughs> <Did> another one. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, Dylan Barry asks this of my old uh, public safety life. Did you ever have to protect the mall Santa? A lot of problems with mall Santas, not the Santas itself. I was tangentially involved in a situation where mall Santa at a big LA based uh, Hollywood based mall, they, they did a late background check on the, that mall Santa and discovered probably not a great idea for him to be around kids. Um, I was there for that, but I didn't deal with that one directly, but the other ones, it's not the Santa. It's the people. I'll tell you something. The mall Santas usually go up like during Black Friday or the, yeah. or the couple days after Black Friday. You go there on a weekend in early December. The mall Santa is sitting there just having plum tree. No one's bothering. <laughs> He's just sitting there waiting for his shift to end. He's trying to get an Auntie Anne's. Yeah. Pretzel having an Auntie Anne's, Auntie Anne's pretzel waiting for, you know, the, the other reindeers to let Rudolph alone. And then just flash forward to like December 23rd at 6 p.m. The entire city's in line and they ain't happy. And I've seen some of the biggest fights and almost had like, again, I just watched four hours at the Capitol Capitol uh, four hours at the Capitol on HBO Max. Great documentary. I was having flashbacks to like Santa mall Santa fights. It was it's a wow. or, or I mean, those people need to be talked to like nerds on the Internet. Like, you know that this is not the canon Santa. You can see him at different times. It's not Batu. He is not only here right now. <laughs> this this, uh, this Santa took a Toyota Tracel and he's in the employee parking lot. Uh, he'll be there. A couple uh, more questions okay. here. And then uh, we got another guest joining us here. Alden, thanks so much. Alden Diaz here right now. You can catch him on Octo Radio. He's not leaving yet, though. Uh, oh, this clown. Uh, if you had to choose uh, a coffee, uh, if, to have a coffee and a donut with Donald Sutherland, or Alan Alda, who would you choose and why? Now, I got to imagine Mariano being uh, one of the old guys around these parts. This is a reference to the MASH films. Uh, Hawkeye, Hawkeye Pierce, uh, Alan Alda played him, and I believe, uh, memory serves, Donald Sutherland played him in the Robert Altman movie version. Um, uh, uh, no jokes, no generation jokes here. Alden, how familiar you are with MASH the TV show and MASH the movie? I am truly only like familiar with the legend of it. You know, like you hear people talk about the finale of MASH, the finale of MASH, like this. Watching thing. live with my folks. Watching yeah. live with my folks. Yep. So I've heard about it in the same way that you hear about like Beatles on Ed Sullivan or like the, right. the you know, the the ending of The Sopranos, like those iconic moments. Um, right. But I have not watched it. I only like to me, even way before MCU, Hawkeye was Clint Barton. But Hawkeye did right. like my mom was Hawkeye. You know, so it was yes. like a different sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Even when I watched uh, Michael Mann's uh, version of uh, Last Mohicans, one of my favorite films, uh, when he start when he's Hawkeye and that, I'm like, that ain't Alan Alda. Like, what are yeah. you doing? Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do love Donald Sutherland. I do love Donald Sutherland. I think he's one of our great actors. I love Kiefer Sutherland. And then Kiefer's daughter is uh, in Veep. Uh, I forgot oh. that, too. She plays uh, um, Selena Meyer's daughter. Um, Young Guns fan. You know I'm going to love Kiefer. Uh, but Alan Alda, some of my earliest memories as a kid are watching MASH and be mesmerized by the performance of Alan Alda, especially the episode where he crashes his Jeep and he's like, ha has to stay awake to stay alive in a, uh, like a, a, a North, uh, a North Vietnamese, uh, like village, like a, like a wow. hut. And it's this uh, bottle episode where he's with the supposed enemy, but they're keeping him alive. It's, it was gripping. And I was like six and just not fully understanding what I was watching. Well, what's a there. POW? Right, like, right. <laughs> it was just like was getting this, and this is the two sides of war. It was, it was, a and I just remember that. So Alan Alda is it? Plus Alan Alda in Flirting with Disaster, one of my favorite comic turns there. So. He's so good. I mean, Alan Alda, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and then also uh, recently in Marriage Story with Adam Driver. He's his attorney yeah. in that movie, and he's so good. Still going, still going. David Taylor says, my dad is a huge fan of MASH. He took family over the Shadow Series at Malibu Creek State Park. Uh, that's a great thing. And also I bring that up because I met David Taylor's dad. Met him at Flappers Comedy Club. Uh, there we go. MASH like potatoes. Lauren Romo is on timeout. She's on timeout. Uh, all right. Uh, we got one more prepared question here. Uh, I don't know, Alden, if how you know, well, you're a music guy. Hmm. You're a music guy. It's not uh, Dua Lipa here, but here we go. Uh if the if the monkey man was on the river bridge using Tweeter as a shield, presumably because he killed the cop in a field, why did Jan reference knowing Tweeter before he became a Jersey girl? And did Tweeter and the monkey man get off that bridge alive? Alden, your thoughts. Well, I mean, we, we got to throw this to, to Tweeter explained on YouTube. Uh, 
that that was a that was a, a journey right there. I feel like this is one of those jokes where it's like, if you get it, oh boy, is it good. But <laughs> if you get it, you, it, yes, you're not wrong. Tweeter and the Monkey Man were hard up for cash. They stayed up all night selling cocaine and hash. You're an undercover cop with a sister named Jan for reasons explained. She loved the Monkey Man. Uh, this is uh, the Traveling Wilburys. Uh, ah. Volume one, a song, Tweeter and the Monkey Man, and uh, back in 88. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, my answer is pretty clear. Um, I do think Tweeter died, but Monkey Man survived, which is why the narrator of the song does sing uh, at the end that he, um, sometimes I think of Tweeter, sometimes I think of Jan, sometimes I don't think about nothing but the Monkey Man, because I think the Monkey Man survived that tale. That's what well, I think. There it is. See, Hot my take. knowledge of this is... Uh, First producer I ever worked for was a diehard, uh, you know, ELO and Jeff Lynne fan and would talk about right. the little berries. And uh, and so, it, I mean, it always sounded like, I mean, a, a, an incredible thing, but I have not done the deep dive into the work. Well, I think you should. I think you should. I think you'd like the Wilburys, especially the Harrison, Jeff Lynne parts of it. Uh, anyone else? In chat? Uh, uh, oh, OK. We got uh, <laughs> Twitter and the Monkey Man is also entitled for BJ and the Bear. Uh, baby, baby. Uh, Charlie has this question. What do you think of the George Harrison video for My Sweet Lord with Mark Hamill, Fred Armisen, Vanessa Bear, so many people, mm -hmm. Weird Al? Um, I uh, gotta say, I tell you, I really liked it. It was kind of a, it harkened back to, did you have a chance to see it, Alden? I did, yeah. I actually watched it yesterday of all days, not knowing it was going to come out, oh, but you did some curious. reach. Thank you for, no, thank you for doing the research. Uh, George Harrison, as everyone knows, George Harrison's my guy, he's my Beatle. Uh, so it was just any new kind of George Harrison content, whether he's in it or not. Uh, and it's got a great reference to some videos and stuff, particularly, um, um, uh, got my mindset on you. Uh, yeah. I loved it. it and it, it reminded me of old music videos that were just kind of weird and random. And sometimes a lot of nineties videos have weird cameos. I'm not talking like when Keanu Reeves was in, uh, uh the hush hush video for Paula Abdul because he was like <laughs> a young actor and cast and he had been in some things, but I'm talking about later on in the nineties, like Judah Friedlander in the Dave Matthews band video. Yeah. Where he's hugged. I just, I thought it, it harkened back to the old style music videos where there's a narrative through line and it's like, does this make sense? Not really, but there is a yeah. protagonist. Like it, yeah. this guy is the lead of the video. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was interesting. And, and, you know, it's just great to see, of course, Mark, you know, on that nerd level, Pat Oswalt. I mean, it just had yeah. so many people it. and it just all to celebrate, you know, because it, a lot of the conversation, especially coming out of Get Back, you know, it's always going to yeah. be the, the Paul John conversation like forever. So to see that it also coincided with a, a George thing. No, yeah, it was really cool. Synced up. It was nice. It was nice. Uh, thank you all for the questions. Uh, great stuff there. We love uh, getting the questions. Uh, and if you want to submit some A's for the Q's, all you have to do is become a supporter at patreon.com slash Ken Napsock. And you too can uh, submit questions on Discord, Patreon, video questions as well on the higher tiers. Almost out of here today. Oh, this has been wonderful. Just hanging out, catching up with you. I'm so glad you're back on Twitter because I, I need to know what <laughs> Luke Skywalker was thinking in 12 tweets or less. Look, you and everyone else, man. I mean, that you, people, someone's got to explain this because no one else is doing it. Maybe maybe there should be Star Wars podcasts. I don't know. Baby, uh, by the way, you know, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just kidding you. Oh, of course, of course. Of course. Uh, um, uh, and also the the sweet irony of Ken Napsok saying, "I'm so glad you're back on Twitter," uh, is hilarious to me. I because mean, you look at Twitter with a, a telescope from yeah. your pirate ship miles yeah. away. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. One one friend, there was a hot button issue going around Star Wars about a year ago, and a friend of mine texted yeah. me at like midnight. Yeah, unbelievable. Right? He texted me at like midnight. It's like, hey, man, I haven't seen you tweet uh, your opinion on this. Uh, just asking what you think. And I was like, what are you doing to me, man? <laughs> like, I mute every word. I don't want anything to do with that crazy world. Here's my yeah. opinion on the situation. I'll talk about it on my podcast uh, because that's how you get words out. All like right. Every we now and this... then you realize you don't have something muted. So. Exactly. Uh, we are, uh, I'll stay on for this year. I'm going to try to make this uh, work here with uh, three. We, we had six last week, so we're definitely going to do it. Joining us now uh, for Ken Takes Calls, and you can get on the show uh, with the StreamYard leak, link or leak exclusive to those on Discord through my Patreon page. Uh, joining the show now is Santa, apparently, according to the name he has given me on uh, the sign-in there. Uh, what's up, John Mariano? Hello, how are you? Nice to meet you, Alden. 
Hey, what's up, man? Nice to meet you too. I love the the setup there. Thanks with Loyota. Thanks. I tried to uh, prepare stuff for Ken for Christmas because so good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. you get for... the gift of a plug. I, I do. I I try, I try to come ready for this. Uh, look, here's the plug. If you go to Mango Publishing's website and they have their store, uh, Why We Love Star Wars by uh, yours truly is on sale 50% off until December 31st. Probably not a holiday, holiday gift for you. That's going to come and go, but that you can get that book 50% off um, up until December 31st. There you go. Awesome. Johnny? Yes, sir. What, what's on your mind other than the – did I answer the Alan Alda Donald, Donald Sutherland question right? Yeah, yeah. Was that properly um, de demographic for you? Um, for yeah, I, I love <laughs> I love attracting the mash crowd. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that you were not going to talk about Hawkeye, so I tried my best to get you to talk about Hawkeye on the show. You did. You did, and it worked well. And I, I, I'm going to watch the finale tonight. I'm sure I'm going to love it because I've been loving the show so far. Um, but that's it. Now, Johnny, Johnny, it's Johnny's birthday. Johnny, uh, you were in Washington, D.C. You came out for two of the comedy shows. We got to have lunch in a pub. Uh, we got to sit in that hotel lobby couch situation. Uh, talk about uh, that. Uh, start with that hotel lobby and talk about the trip. I mean, the, the hotel lobby w w was actually a pretty sweet setup. Um, Ken and I got to sit about 20 feet apart from each other. Yeah. Um, and, and just comfortably have a nice conversation about life and stuff. Um, but th the setting itself was like, was like sixties talk show, right? Yeah. Like it, that's yeah. what the, that's what the vibe felt like. It really did. Yeah. Um, it was, it was really, really cool. Um, the comedy shows were great. The, the venue, um, the room, I love the room. Like I fell in love with the room. I think night one is, yeah. is it was I don't want to call it cozy because it makes it sound like it was small, but it was intimate, right? Like it yes. was, it was intimate. It was, it was, it, fe it felt like a um, speakeasy. Like it felt like you were going right. to a place you weren't allowed to go to. Um, and they were sneaking you in the back. And that, that was fun. Um, and just taking in DC in the times of COVID. Now I know it's a pandemic. We're taking it very seriously. Right. But besides that, like the crowds are down. So take advantage of it. Like I got to, go and see the white house from outside and see the white house. Like there wasn't a million people out front and I had breakfast in right. front of that walk up to Washington monument. I had a really nice day and then walked about 10 miles back to Ken to go grab lunch, which was fantastic. Yeah. This is uh, all this is the kind of diva I am. Um, John was texting me uh, and uh, he was like, I'm ready. I can meet you for lunch. And I chose the pub around the corner from my hotel, and he had to walk thirty plus minutes to meet me. <laughs> yeah, so 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 I power walked through 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 drizzling rain that was pounding on oh, me. Oh man, John, yeah. the dedicate. What did you have? Was it at least good? Oh, for, for lunch. Yeah. Um, what did you it, walk a half hour for? Well, we we ordered. They had some nacho yeah. fries. Mm -hmm. And I had ordered a salad um, and I'm going to highlight some of the things that happened to me in DC here in a second. And John and, and Alden can take them in. Uh, I had a salad because of something that had happened. I'll explain. But then I also ordered the nacho fries. I had about three of them. Then Ellis and his high school buddy joined us. They sat down and they poked at a couple of nacho fries. I don't remember what you ordered, John, but those nacho fries, we left them all behind. We failed. We're, no, we, we did fail, but I can tell you, the nacho fries were better than what I had because I don't remember what I had, but I remember the nacho fries. I snuck like two or three of them. And yeah, yeah. And it was one of those pubs I love because I can't, I've never been to London and I can't wait to get to like uh, London proper. I want to, or, and I definitely want to go into like the, the, the country and go to like a real like English uh, or um, God forbid, sorry, Charlie, an Irish pub. Because um, <laughs> this was one of those things that was like, it's the middle of DC and it was like, hey, it's, it's an English pub then, hey. And it's, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was nothing. It was just a restaurant. Yeah. But they tried Absolutely. to sell it as a pub. Uh, Johnny, um, uh, thanks for coming out to the shows. It really, oh, Charlie, Charlie Ashby says I'm one fourth Irish. That probably means he loses some kind of health benefits out there, I think. Um, <laughs> Johnny, it meant a lot uh, for you to see two shows. You and Eddie Harrell were there for two yeah. shows. Pete Rich won one show. Maybe next time Pete tries harder. But, uh, you know, Johnny was great. It was great to have you there. No, but Pete was doing the Lord's work. So he was. He was. Look, I, look, I, 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 I don't know Pete Rich. It was the first time I met him. I know him through this stuff. I don't know him personally. And I just looked out from the stage. 
and I saw him there with this uh, beautiful lady and he looked, Pete looked so happy and healthy. I was so happy for him that I forgot, I forgot a joke for like half a beat. I actually, I missed the set that night. I missed my bits were in a different location because I was just basking in the glow of, of Pete Rich's happiness. Yeah. But both sets, because you change it up for me, it was great because it, it was like, I watched a brand new set, just even rearranging the pieces. It's, it's like, it's like changing the song, but you yeah. know, don't 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 let Ken undersell it at all. Like, if you have the chance to see Ken live, I know we see Ken live every week here, but when, if you get to see Ken on stage, it's a, it's a different animal, and it's it's definitely worth the price of admission. Thank and, you, Johnny. And the two drink minimum. And the two drink minimum. I'm gonna try. Yeah. We might be doing if celebration happens, but there might be something in the, in the area. So maybe Alden can can see me do some actual stand up comedy. Oh, absolutely. I got, I got, but a taste and a moose bouche at the mm. brewery a couple of years ago. Oh yeah. And that was, I, you know, that was, it wasn't even me. I wish I, I, yeah, that's a, that's a whole story. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, quickly, this is a shorter version of what we love doing here. Life ranked. And uh, what I'm going to do here is talk about some things that happened in D.C. and rank them. Um, it, Life Rank used to be my old podcast. Now I just took that 40-minute show and uh, put it down here into uh, you know, about two seconds. Here's the best things that happened to me in D.C. Number five was seeing young future policymakers out in the town all day long. Mark and I, every time we're walking, going for walks, whether by ourselves or, or, or as a team, we were just laughing at uh, in a good way, like a respectful way at all these like mid 20s, fresh out of like Georgetown interns <laughs> running around the town in their sweater vests and their leggings under skirts, just looking official and professional, uh, knowing that they were probably in good or bad ways. We'll find out f uh, shaping the future of our country. It was almost inspiring. Almost, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> almost, almost is probably a good word for it. I, I guess I was on a different side of town. I got to see some tourists. Yeah. But you got you you guys got a much better better, better angle of up and coming DC. Yeah. Friday morning, man. It was like business business, uh, not casual business tents heading through town. Alden, they they were like the the they were like the policy policymaker version of like you in the podcast world. I'm going places. I'm, I've got my beanie and, you know, boom, crossing the street in D.C. Oh, yeah. That's you in podcast world, which I respect and love. And that's them in D.C. See, they, they're over there like, you know, they've got a, a sweet internship with, you know, a, a congressman mm. or a congresswoman. And then right. I, I'm coming on Ken Goes Live. So they're the same thing. I am really? an, like an old senator. I am. <laughs> I'm definitely like, hey, hey Alden, you want, you want to come work in my office? It's great. Um I'd be, I'm a 17 term senator. Um, the other thing, uh, someone was screaming about something always. Everywhere you go, whether it's an organized protest and a speaker or in the constitutional gardens where some uh, young lady was just screaming nice. a song to the high heavens by herself. God bless her. Uh, someone was always screaming about something, including. I said this on stage, and I don't think people believe it was a true story, including the, shall we say, residentially challenged gentleman who picked me out of a large crowd, started to come at me, screaming, how much do I lift? Then asking if I could beat his, quote, skinny ass. And then when I turned around, said, oh, why don't you skip a meal, fatty? And proceeded to berate my weight in front of a crowded intersection. It was a fun Friday. So did you kick his skinny ass? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I I felt based on what I had already eaten on that trip, I felt shame, Alden, and I yeah. thought he was right. Oh no, he got it. He won the mental battle. That's what it he was. won the mental battle because he he start he starts coming out of the the side view. Mark and I kind of saw him. He didn't acknowledge Mark at all. He brushed past other people and he starts yelling at me. What do you lift? What do you lift? Like I lift weights literally five days a week. I just also eat seven days a week. Um, so I'm like, oh, finally, someone's recognizing my broad shoulders. And I turned to him. And then he, and when I turned, he started, oh, oh, is that my, and I kind of made it, I go, ah, I don't lift enough yet, sir. And he's like, oh, you think you could beat my skinny ass? And I was like, whoa, what's happening? This is escalating quickly. Crazy. And then when I really fully turned, and like a hoodie on, like a gray hoodie, he literally yeah. does the up and down. He goes, and he goes, skip a meal. Damn. I know it's hard because it's the holidays, but why don't oh, you skip goodness. a meal once a day? Because you fat. 
And I just did not know what to do. I just didn't know what to do. And Ellis like grabbed me by the hand and just said, let's cross. <laughs> now, now, and said, let's go. With distance from the situation. Yeah. Your mental image of the man. How do you and think it, you would do? And I, and I went back to, yeah, well, I would have done, look, I've, I, I didn't lose a fight in 17 years of the old job, but I didn't want to go there. But also he won because I went back to my hotel hotel room for two hours. and I just sat in the bed, not crying, but doing that thing where you're like, should I cry? Because I'd like to. God, this, this man was a psychological demon. You got yeah, it. it was. It was great. All Nine right. Games. The other thing that happened uh, decently, I love uh, history meeting chain restaurants. It's my favorite thing. Uh, Ellis has a great story of Abe Lincoln and us going to eat at the Hard Rock Cafe next to the Forge Theater. Um, I just love that you'll be looking on Google Maps and be like, oh, yeah, I do want to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I want to go down to the uh, Washington Monument. Oh, there's a Cheesecake Factory. It's just a, a, a lesson in the march of time. I think it's more poignant than people realize. Oh, uh, that's fantastic. It reminds me of when I was in Rome. And you're at the Coliseum and you're like, this is the Coliseum. And then there's a Mickey D's like a hundred yards, like to the I, right. And yeah. <laughs> it, are, have you just watched the Christians get mauled by the lions? Come on out for a Big Mac. Like, hey, I get it. I get it. It was fun. Johnny, did you have any, uh, while you were there, you, you went on a little tour, a sightseeing tour. Did you stop at like a Panera on, uh, you know, the birthplace of uh, James Madison or something? I did. I did grab Starbucks on my way to the White House and had, had, had a Starbucks yeah, the morning at the White House. That was that was the closest I came to that. Mm. Yeah, but to be but to be fair, uh, fast food has not been a stranger to that place for like last four years. Yeah. You know, that that is true. And Starbucks to tie it in with our our shared interest, Starbucks CEO and chairwoman I didn't know is Melody Hobson, the wife of one George Lucas. I didn't know that. So those are, yeah, she's the chairwoman of Starbucks. All the Diaz, man, look at that with some stuff there. Uh, I bet, yeah, oh, Charlie Ashby says in London, there are McDonald's locations that have Gregorian. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. Ah, oh, see, I love that. I love that. See, when you get to Anaheim, Alden, you're going to see something, even though there's, uh, you know, there's a little history to Disneyland and stuff like that. Hmm. God bless Disney. They have bought the entire city and the area around it. They have just paved it over with uh, franchises. <laughs> Love like <laughs> just like we do with movies and I'm a fan, I'm a fan of what they do in movies. I'm a Disney shareholder. I love it. But the, you look around, it is just like, imagine this is a real world and it's not, not, not the history. I want to go to London and eat like a Burger King that has uh, pictures of uh, queen Victoria in it or something like that. Um, the <laughs> second thing, second thing, haunted hotels. I'm not saying Mark Ellis and I stayed in a haunted hotel. It's a place called the Architect, but it was like built in like 1890. The you get you check in. There's an entire binder with the history of it, and there was on two the two straight nights. There was both like at three four in the morning. I woke up and I thought, oh, my neighbor's checking out. Got an early flight or something because mm -hmm. uh, I was gonna have to do that Monday morning. I thought, oh, my my the neighbor is checking out. We're in the airport, uh, Dulles Airport. Ellis turns to me and goes, hey. Let me ask you a question. Did you hear weird noises two nights in a row? And I went, yeah. He's like, there was a slight pounding on my wall and door that wouldn't go away for about an hour during that time. And no one was out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Johnny Alden. I don't know what you believe or what you want to believe, but I think we might've had some sort of ghost in that hotel floor. Look, was there a guy at any point in this hotel that looked like he had been there since it opened? But you weren't quite sure. See, Mark Mark had a, a great buddy, Jack Jackson, was there for his high school buddy, and he uh, grew up where Mark did in Colonial Williamsburg, and told a story about in being living in a house built in 1790, and two, on two or three occasions saw someone dressed in 1790 gear walking through his house, and one time even in his bed. And he says, "I swear in my life, swear in my life." I'm not making it up. So all oh, the I have I didn't been, see that. I have been in a Louisiana farmhouse and I have seen the, you know, the, the old man who built that farmhouse walk through, went to my, at the time partner's grandmother and said, do people walk through this house? And she goes, Oh yeah, I think that was my dad. He comes through sometimes. And I was like, <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> see, see, Look at that. Look at that. Vermont Mike says it's the wind. Old Hanso says it's rats breaking wind. Uh, Will McClain wants to move out immediately. 
And the final thing on this special life rank, and we'll start wrapping up this program. Thanks, you all, for uh, hanging in here on Twitch. want to also shout out uh, Greer Galloway, Sammy Leon Mendoza, and Nilo for subscribing to the Twitch channel. We're getting back to doing video games and playing some Red Dead Redemption 2 soon here. Uh, so there you go. Aaron, the author, says funky stuff happens in New Orleans. I bet. I can't. Grace and I are going to try to get out there and do some ghost touring and all that kind of stuff. Um, my favorite thing that happened in D.C., was seeing all those young future policymakers drunk and on the town Friday and Saturday night. This was the flip side. Friday afternoon, Thursday afternoon, we were seeing them just moving all about, trying to get to that senator's influential senator's office, trying to get that internship, trying to just uh, work their way up. Friday, Saturday night, we passed some clubs. And I got to tell you, it was fun to see these policymakers making mistakes that eventually will be brought up in their Supreme court confirmation hearings. <laughs> you could see it happening. You Dude, could when you're it. wound that tight, the unwinding is chaotic. It was, it was not my joke. So I can't take credit for it. But Mark Ellis at one point yelled out, start keeping a calendar like to all these folks. It was, it was great. Um, Johnny, did you have a chance to see that walking back from the clubs? No, because we, stayed relatively close to my room and then you guys would split off and walk back to yours. That's so right. So I had I had like a very sad, lonely walk down down that very dark block of like uh, I got my I just had my subway sandwich and now I'm gonna go back to my room. Do 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 on the way back from the Saturday show we were passing an ATM and it's me uh Mark and his buddy and there was three young ladies uh dressed in club gear which by the way props to them those skirts were so short and i was freezing in my layers and they're just like we're out on the town we're doing this um and they were at the atm and there was like a kerfuffle and, and they turned to us and they say hey do any of you have cash and i pulled out my wallet gave one of them a 20 i go how much you need and they said well the, the club cover is 20 we're having a problem with this thing i go here's 20 and they were so excited. They were so thankful. And I looked at them and said, I said, do one thing for me, though. And I said, do not trust any men from this point out the rest of the night. OK. And they all giggled and they went, yes, sir. And I realized I was 73 in that moment. It was oh, great. My goodness. <laughs> it was That's great. when you all of a sudden it was just a hoodie. He yes, just, he became one with the force and just disappeared. <laughs> and I just drift onto the ground. So there you go. That was uh, my look back on the trip to D.C. If you all can get a chance to go, do it. It's great. All right. We are almost out of here for uh, this day. Thank you all uh, for supporting and watching uh, here on Twitch or a little bit later up on uh, uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, Ken gave them $20 in a Werther's original. I would not, I would never share my Werther's original. That's for me. <laughs> That's for me. Thanks to Trey Thompson for uh, also supporting over there on uh, Patreon. I don't take Streamlabs anymore because uh, I want them to uh, do better on some things out there. Uh, but I am uh, taking uh, donations for the show, one-time donations if you want to help keep some of the lights on, but uh, not necessarily uh, needed for what we do over here. We're just having fun hanging out with all of you. Alden, thanks for coming on in here. I appreciate it. So sorry you lost your Twitter uh, identity, but you found yourself again. Tell them where they can find you and follow you and listen to you. Yeah, so you can find me on the new Twitter, and it now matches the Instagram. I, I did some synergy there, and it's very simple now. It's uh, <laughs> watch match. It's at that Alden Diaz. I know how you. I know you know how to spell that. It's A L D E N D I A Z. Yes. And then uh, Octo Radio Star Wars podcast. It's three shows. It's my show, the interview show that Ken's been on. Tory Fox's show, multi part breakdowns, fun Star Wars topics. Then we're also doing a Rebels rewatch show. Boba Fett's going to be starting up coverage this week. I'm sure Ken is is getting ready for those those tricky yep. Wednesdays and Thursdays uh, yep. to, to hustle and get them all out. Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, also on the other shows, but you can find those, um, you know, on my socials and all that stuff. Love it. Thank you, Alden. Absolutely uh, fun to always talk with you, work with you, hang out with you. And yeah, I'm so I noticed you got that uh, synced up branding. One of my biggest, biggest pet peeves of young podcasters and commentators got different branding everywhere with cute names. It's like your email, you know, funky dog 69 and you're applying for jobs. No, you sync up that branding and That's you've right. done it. That's right. You, you're you got in early with the Ken Knapsack. No one can fight you for that. 
But see, yeah, but I used to be Cospan, which is like my last name backwards. It was a fun name. Uh -huh. And then I realized that's silliness. That's silliness. No one's going to take that seriously. So flip it around, made it the real name. It's boring, but it's effective. Somewhere out there, someone's like, where's Cospan? I really <laughs> looked up to him. <laughs> Where'd what he go? What's he been doing ever since he uh, left Schmoes now? Uh, that is it for now, folks. Thank you. We'll be back next week as we get ready for the new year. Bye. It's Ken Goes Live. Mm -hmm.